Welcome to the video tutorial that will give an overview of esters um, because they come in several flavors. There's carboxylic esters, bioesters, and phosphoesters. So let's, um, let's take a look. We can see here the aspirin. Aspirin is a great example. We can recognize the ester there. So we would describe this as an ester. And many times when you just hear the word ester, it's understood to be a carboxylic ester because it's a derivative of a carboxylic acid. And so we would give the condensed formula of, or we could have this generic structure here of R, O, the double O, R prime, right? For the condensed formula, CO2, R prime, all right? And so here is the, the ester group. All righty, now we've become aware that we can replace oxygen with sulfur. So then this would be an example of a thioester. And so we could write that generically like this. And here we go. All right, so there's our thioester, and acetyl coenzyme A is very important in um, energy production, and we'll see that a lot more later in the semester. And so the condensed form here would be written like this. All right. Now, phosphate esters um, are a little more complicated because phosphorus is a, a, a third period element, and so it's allowed to have an expanded octet. Notice that phosphorus is not limited by the octet rule. So let's start by looking at, at phosphoric acid. So here we have the structure of phosphoric acid. So what makes phosphate groups so important to our biochemistry is basically there's three arms coming off. Each of these arms, the hydrogens, can be replaced with R groups. Now this molecule is shown in a biological um, environment, and so we recognize that these are all acidic protons. So in a biological environment, the phosphate group is deprotonated how the phosphate ester forms is this hydrogen atom right here has been replaced by this glucose molecule. So we would describe this compound right here as a phosphate ester. In particular, because this is a glucose molecule, we would describe, we could say this is G6P for glucose 6-phosphate. And um, right now the emphasis is just to recognize the functional groups, but and we'll come back to this later when we study biochemistry. So then, this bond right here is described as the phosphoester bond because it links the phosphate group to the R group. And why this is important is because the phosphate groups have the ability to link together. And so if we're looking, here's an example of, this is adenosine diphosphate, so this is ADP. And so if we were looking here, this bond right here we would describe as the phosphoester bond. And then when the two, and so this phosphate group here, then links to a second phosphate group. And so this bond right here would be the phosphoanhydride bond. So when you're reading about biochemical reactions, we will see all these phosphate groups linked together. And so it's important that when you're reading an explanation, you recognize the difference between the phosphoanhydride bond and the phosphoester bond. Um, fortunately for us, 
these phospho and hydride bonds are we're able to um, make and reform or break and reform these bonds and we use that in energy production so let's look at our next handout next page and um, just show you the context but this is not like a real super emphasized por point for right now but down the road here is a molecule of ATP, and so when we're looking at ATP, here is the phosphoester bond, and this is a, this is a stronger bond. This bond is not going to break very easily. However, this is the one we care the most about. Maybe I should put that in green. This is the important bond here for energy transport because our body um, stores and transports energy in this phosphoanhydride bond right here. So phosphoanhydride. Okay, so this is the bond that's continually made and reformed as ATP is converted back and forth from ADP. So, through the gain and loss of this phosphate group right here, right? So, as we lose the phosphate group, energy is released that we can use for work. And then when we put the phosphate back on, energy has to come in. So, energy in and energy out. And that energy is all related to the energy held in this phospho and hydride bond right here. So we go from ATP to ADP. And so when we get study um, bioenergetics in the future, you'll want to come back to this reference. So the main point of this tutorial was to make you aware of the three different type of esters and the difference between the phosphoester and phospho and hydride bond. So I hope you'll find this information useful as you get to work on your homework to reinforce your understandings.